Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm Kiana Faircloth, host of Afternoon Jazz on WBGO, of course, Monday through Friday from 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And today I am elated, always excited, but this time I'm welcoming a sister friend of mine. She is uh, fastly becoming a sister friend of mine, Miss Alicia Olatuja. She joins me here. Hi. Hey, <laughs> hey sister friend. <laughs> Hi, sister friend. How are you? I'm good. We made it. <laughs> yes, we made it. Come on now. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. I can't believe I haven't had you on before now, but better late than never. Hey, That's you know, it's such a time as this. <laughs> right. And especially because, um, you know, every every day of the year for me is Black History Month, but uh, they yeah. say February is Black History Month. So <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no better time than now to have you on and to celebrate your music and your upcoming performance that'll be happening at Flushing Town Hall on February 19th. Yes, yes, super excited. Yes, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And you know, like perfect timing. I know it seems like it's been a while since so I got a chance to see you. So I'm glad that even though, you know, we're screen to screen, yes. I'll take what I can get, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I think the last time I saw you in person in the flesh was at the Montclair Jazz Festival. Oh, that's right. And we were running around. You look so cute. I remember you had the cutest outfit on. <laughs> oh, thank you. You did too. Your beautiful <laughs> dress and your performance, as always, was, my God, just oh, soul stirring. Thank you. you. Know. Were you with Billy Childs um, at that performance? No, no. I think, um, who was with me? I think Mike King was on keys with me at that at that performance. So it was just my gig on that one. Okay. And, uh, yeah. But it would have been super fun if Billy was there. We always have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Indeed. I'm just really excited. I've seen you perform. Actually, the last time I saw you and we got to talk was at Montclair, but I saw you at NJPAC performing with Christian McBride's The Movement That's Revisited. Right. Um, right. Just a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and you've been making the rounds with Christian McBride, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's about time, actually, because when we recorded the Movement Revisited, that was ten years ago, almost. Wow, God, time flies. Yeah, but then it was like all this, you know, red tape to get everything done and all the rights and things like that, because he's, you know, celebrating these five icons, and so you're dealing with so many moving parts. So the album was actually released like last year. <laughs> after so long so now it's finally touring and that's why you know he's really doing a lot and we were able to be at the kennedy center last weekend which was amazing uh, i'm still actually buzzing from that experience so many amazing um emmy and and tony award winning icons and voices were present and so getting a chance to share these stories you know my song is about malcolm x and so being able to share these incredible stories mm -hmm. with such incredible people on the stage it just feels like such an honor I i'm telling you I'm, st I'm still buzzing i really yeah, am. indeed you know the thing that's interesting about you is that you're classically trained mm -hmm. now you came out of that classical genre i think the first time i saw you perform was at mm -hmm. blue violin yep <laughs> you remember that i do that's what i'm saying i think you have actually seen me more than anybody else wow well, i feel like i've been following you <laughs> you've got more shows than my mom probably at this point <laughs> like like so when you say sister friend no really you, you on that level of like family attendance you oh, know what really? i mean <laughs> yeah i mean i grew up singing in the church so my origins always start with you know that but i noticed a ton of my friends because all of my friends were singing you know we we just were in that that crop of vocalists you know from a young age and so i noticed that they started having vocal damage was starting to happen with them at, i'm talking like 11 and 12 years old which is crazy young um to be having that kind of um injury and so you know with that happening it was so discouraging so heartbreaking and watching that happen i was like yeah i'm gonna try to do my best so that is never my story so i actually started studying classical music to kind of evade that possibility so I can really explore my voice, get to know it better, and then apply it to all the genres that I was interested in doing. And I just ended up having to find success in the classical world. So that was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> blue viola wow. was a surprise too, that piece. You know, sometimes it comes out of the blue, but 
you never know what you're preparing for sometimes. You know, and I remember one of the things, one of the first things that uh, Diane Reeve said to me when I met her, she's like, you know, stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. And she's yes. right. Like <laughs> being prepared, you, you, it's good to be prepared so that whatever door opens, you can actually walk through it. Mm. So a ton of classical doors just opened up. And I was like, oh, I was, oh, me, me? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and I just, you know, executed the opportunities that were in front of me. But they, that was really a surprising uh, neighborhood of career that I wasn't even expecting, but it's actually worked really well with what I'm doing now. Yeah. So you, you found the interest naturally to want to study classical mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Yeah. It was wow. more so I was thinking technique. I had no idea I was going to be doing operas. I was like that, that, you know what I mean? Like that wasn't the goal. But then once I started understanding technique and understanding the voice, it just opened up a whole new world. And I was so curious to see like all the different things I could do and how I can find many ways to express myself. So that was kind of how that happened, really. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you said you grew up in St. Louis? I did. I did. Yeah. Tell There's me a about bunch of us out there that grew up in I St. Louis. I know. Gosh, a lot of killer musicians <laughs> yeah. come out of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. yeah. like it's, the the it's like, hey. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I grew up in St. Louis. And, you know, it's funny, though, most of the musicians that also grew up in St. Louis, I didn't meet them in St. Louis. I met them once I moved here to New York. But okay. yeah. Yeah, that's where I actually, my stomping grounds. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. I want to skip ahead just a little bit because you have something really interesting that you're doing now with your Vocal Breakthrough Academy. Yes. And as you talk about, you know, that confidence that you gained in learning to sing the correct way, you're kind of passing that on now with your, with your Vocal Breakthrough Academy yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. And it's not just for folks from what I understand, you don't have to necessarily be a musician Not or a singer mm -hmm. to to benefit from exactly. it. Tell us about that. Yeah. I mean, for me, my relationship with music and with singing has been something that has shaped how I think and navigate. It's, it's, it's shaped my internal navigation of being able to connect with myself on the inside and then make an impact on the outside. And so being able to use music as a tool for that type of breaking through uh, comparison culture, breaking through self-doubt and finding my authentic voice. It's just using music as a tool to do that. And so I know what it has done for my life. And so when it came time for me to develop a course, because I've been wanting to develop a course for a while. I've been teaching for years, doing master classes and workshops all over the, the world, actually. But I was like, let's put together something that can help people be able to use singing as a tool for personal mm -hmm. development, even if they've never sang a day in their life. Wow. And that was something that I was always passionate about. You know, like I always say, you don't have to be a carpenter to use a hammer. You know, right. you can, you have many things you can use it for. You want to decorate your world. You want to, you know, put your personality up. Then you need some tools to do that, but you don't have to be somebody who does that for a living in music. Singing is such an incredible instrument because we all have it. It's free, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and on top of that, it's, it, I, think, I think it's time to redefine how the voice can reveal who we really are to ourselves and others. Huh. And so, yeah. And so through Vocal Breakthrough Academy, we do just that. So we have, it's a mindset mentorship is what it really is. Mindset so, mentorship. That's yes. so interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset mentorship because honestly, singing is incredibly vulnerable. Like you're just out there. You can't yeah. hide behind, oh, the, the piano was out of tune. That's why I sounded like that. Or, you know what I mean? It's like, you can't hide behind anything. It's just you. And you have to have a, a, a type of relationship with your voice, your sound, and and your, your greater why. You know, why are you expressing this? Why is this important to you? Mm -hmm. How is this your authentic mode of expression right now? And so you learn the type of questions to ask yourself so that you can actually dive into personal development. A lot of times we don't know the type of questions to ask. And when I earlier last year, I got um, certified my life coach certification. Nice. And I combine that with coaching, vocal coaching, creative vocal empowerment coaching. And that's really what expanded Vocal Breakthrough Academy into um, such a powerhouse. So people are coming in there 
their secretaries, their doctors, their financial analysts. Wow. You got a lot of instrumentalists that come in because there's something between them and the audience at all times. And they want to find a way to better express themselves, even through their instrument, by being able to have a better connection with their original instrument. So mm. just being able to see these breakthroughs, I knew it was going to be powerful. I knew it was going to work. But, you know, I've never been a financial analyst. I've never been a doctor. So the nuances of how them using their voices has it, it has caused such vulnerability and connection with themselves and others. And watching this happen in just a five week time period is blowing my mind and blowing minds. Yeah. So, Vocal Breakthrough Academy is powerful. What kind of feedback have you been getting from oh, your man. students? How have their lives been changed as a result? Wow, so many ways. Um, some people, they've always been afraid. They've always been afraid of what they can do or how to express themselves. And it shows up in every other aspect of their lives. Hmm. And so being able to see how once they're able to get up here, tap into that vulnerability, and succeed and show themselves what they can do. It's amazing, but I've had people come in who are who experienced maybe vocal trauma. So they're not even singers necessarily, but they had maybe radio iodine treatment. One of my clients had radio iodine treatment and it fried her voice. Oh, like wow. fried it. And so when she spoke, it was like a different voice was coming out of her. And it really caused a disconnect. Imagine waking up, any of you out there watching, imagine waking up tomorrow and you speak and the sound that comes out of you is like not the voice you recognize anymore. That has a really big impact on your psyche, your relationship with your own body. And so through Vocal Breakthrough Academy, she was able to one, fall in love with just her voice now. It's like, this is your signature sound. So, you know, you wanna embrace it. Don't reject it because what you resist persists, right? So you're just going to feel more yes. and more awkward. And she fell back in love with her sound. And the process of doing so was so healing, especially when people suffer from um, any type of trauma, because you you kind of, your relationship with your body changes. And you can find mm -hmm. that out have gone through chemo, people have experienced things like that. Their relationship with their very body feels like, do I trust it? You know, so being able to do that, I've had people also go through the course because they just thought, oh, this will be fun. Let me just try something new. And one of my clients, she and she tells everyone about her breakthrough. I even had her on as a special guest on my um, IG live that I do every Monday at 12 p.m. called All Things Coaching. She came on as a guest and she said through the course and through the, the journey that we go through, she was able to realize that she actually had an emotional scar from her divorce and she was in an unhealthy, abusive relationship and it caused her to lose her voice, her yeah. voice, like who she was, how she was going to express herself, mm. how she was going to be able to present herself into the world. And so going back into the work field, she found herself mimicking or thinking that she needed to express herself and communicate like all the men that she was working with in this, you know, high, you know, pressure business world. Going through the course, she said she was able to find healing and reconciliation with her real voice, how she wants to express herself. And it, she said it impacted how she now communicates in the corporate world. And she's able to show up in a new way. She said, I feel like me again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Your that voice is so you. powerful. Mm -hmm. So the course is broken up into three chunks. We go over mindset and we really dive in and we go break all the break breakthrough. We do blocks, block breakthrough. So there's many things that get in the way, insecurities, fears, like, oh my gosh, we're going to sound like we deal with all of that. <laughs> we get in there. And when you do that kind of work, you can apply that to anything. And we, so we have the mindset, then we teach you about your voice. So you can understand it better. Like, what does your voice do? I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I, don't, I mean, everybody's voice is a unique and special. Um, it's like a fingerprint of your sound. So we train them so that you can understand how to use it, how to get power in your voice without yelling, how to make sure you're phrasing and how you're communicating the way you intended to. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, we think we sound one way and everybody's like, that's not how it came yeah. out. So we do that. And then we also have a, a section that's all about 
your heart, how you connect with what you're saying, how you connect with other people, how you stay connected to your greater why, no matter what platform you're showing up on. That could be the stage, the living room, classroom, boardroom, wherever, right? So that's how it's it's set up. And so the feedback, like, you know, her feedback is just one of many and it blows my mind. And I know I developed the course, but I'm telling you, it blows my mind yeah. when I hear about it. And so we have a whole page set up on um, vocalbreakthroughacademy.com. I, I added an extra page just to put these testimonials on because they're so powerful. People just need to hear it. Yeah. And yeah. all of this over, you said five weeks? Yeah. That's the thing. Wow. What took me 15 plus years to learn about myself and, and trying to make sure I'm being consistent in who I really am and showing up for myself on the inside so that I can show up on the outside. Mm -hmm. Took years and years and years. But the way that we've set up the framework is that you have your vocal breakthrough in as little as five weeks. Usually it's before, um, but I just say five weeks. Now people are having breakthroughs week two, you know, so awesome. can you go on for longer if you want to? Are you able? Yeah, to... yeah, yeah. What we've done is um, whenever I do a workshop, I give away a ton of free information, which I always love to do anyway, just pouring out. But usually I love when people attend the workshop because then they get a chance to have bonuses and free gifts and even extend their experience, which is something that's really exciting that we're doing now with the vocal workshop. So after the five weeks are over, if you, you know, come to the master class and you get that bonus, you get to hang out for an extra five weeks. And what it does is it gives you a chance to further explore your voice post breakthrough. So people are able to really like now that they're freed up, they're like, oh, now what can I do? And so yeah. that's a new thing that we've added to um, the course and people are super excited. We also have a membership option that's going to be for graduates because you know, people are going through the course and I say, you know what, you all have committed, you've committed to yourself. So I'm going to try to show up even more so for you. So for the BBA fam, which is what we call it, because it's such a family a connection, you know, you have the, the course and the content, but we also have a lot of live elements to it. And so you end up having connections and building like this family vibe with everybody that's in your cohort. And so now we are going to be doing a membership option where those who have graduated can still stay connected with the vocal workshop. And we awesome. run that thing, you know, getting a chance to have one-on-one -on -one coachings, but in a group setting and also discussing things that come up. Sometimes it ends up becoming like a group life coaching session and it's just so much fun. And so it's, I'm really excited about that. That's going to be the new edition that's coming up. I love and, that. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. Just curious. What made you want to get your, certification in life coaching. Did you always have an interest in that? Well, when you're teaching, so, you know, I come from a family of educators, like my mother's a teacher, my grandmother's a teacher, like everybody, the education is so strong in my family. And, you know, a lot of vocal coaches are coaches anyway, but it's important to be able to learn or, or access more tools to be able to be more effective for your clients. And so they ultimately taught me that I, I needed, like when I started seeing the breakthroughs people were having in this course, like the one I was just telling you about, you know, real having a, a, a realization that there was a scar that she had not healed and seeing that I was like, you know what, I need to have more tools because the breakthroughs are way more powerful than what the world of just music mm. addresses. And so I was like, I need to get this certification so that I could be able to make sure that I'm giving them the tools to really be able to navigate what's happening now. You know, you're shaking things up. When you start dig digging in and, and breaking through belief systems that people have about themselves to show up, you know, you're dealing with real stuff. And so I was like, let me get myself upgraded so that, right. so that I can upgrade this course, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I see. It really feels like it's, you know, you think of Toastmasters, but it's kind of like vocal <laughs> Toastmasters in a way. That's so cool. Yeah. I love it. So vocalbreakthroughacademy.com. That's the website. Mm -hmm. And the next grouping we're going to be doing on April 28th is the next master class. So right now um, the course is going, it's happening. Um, so the next opening of the doors will open again in April. And when I open up the, the 
the sign up, you'll know about it. It's going to be not just on the website, but it'll be through my social media. So I always mention it too when I do my Monday lives so that, you know, you can just go in, click the bio, you're fine. Um, so that'll be opening up on the 28th and people are already like sending me the private DMs. They're like, I know it. Can you put me on the wait list? So it's awesome. like, I'm like, yeah. So, you know, if anybody has any questions about that, you can send me a DM and um, I'll put you in the early registration before I open up re registration, which will be a few in April. It'll be in April. But the 28th is when the door is open and I'll be doing a master class, give, you know, giving you all these tips, showing you all these things and kind of showing you how it all works together. And then I'll extend an invitation at the end of the master class. So if you want to join, you can. But this way you'll get mad discounts, bonuses, gifts like, like you get all the goodies right when you come to the master class. So I'm really excited about that. We're revving up for that in April. Awesome. Well, you've got a lot going on. You've got the Flushing Town Hall on the 19th. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. That's the most immediate thing. Mm -hmm. um, who do you have coming with you to the performance there? You're going to be performing songs from your album. Yes. Songs yes. From my album. yes. Well, I do have a show this weekend as well at Frostburg State University. So pretty much like every week. Um, so I, I fly out. I come in. I, you know, we, we get Vocal Breakthrough academy out and then we, bam, we're back on the road. Wow. So actually this um, Saturday, I'll be at Frostburg State University. And then on the 19th, I'm going to be at Flushing uh, Town Hall, which I'm really excited because I've never been there before. And then the following week after that, I'll be at, I'll be at East Lansing and then I'll be doing Traverse. And then... Right after that, I'm going to hit the road with Chris Bodie for 10 days. Wow, nice. Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff going on. So I always keep everybody up to date on my social media. So if you can make it, you know, definitely let me know. But if you can't, let your friends know, let your family know. We kind of, we're in a time where we need to start getting back to the, the healing elements of live performance. You know, mm. people are, are ready. We've so, been starved. <laughs> oh, honey, ribs showing, just just oh, no. starving. And you can tell in the audience, people are just allowing it to wash over them in such a beautiful way. Yeah. Yeah. And this album in particular, Intuition, Songs mm -hmm. from the Minds of Women, so many, the way you do justice to the music of these powerful women, like mm -hmm. Sade, like Kate Bush, like... Oh my gosh, I played today over the moon, under the moon and over the sky, which yes. I absolutely love. I Yay. <laughs> that's probably my favorite song by her. And when I heard Yay. you do it, I'm like, oh my God. Oh, that's yes. awesome. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of people don't know some of these artists that we are creating these reimaginings and arrangements for. So, I mean, a lot of them, of course, you know, no one can say they don't know Joni Mitchell, right? We all know Sade, Tracy Chapman. You know, I wanted to really celebrate and champion women composers, but also give a wide variety of these composers um, room to express how they express through their text. And then we created these reimaginings musically. So sometimes you'll hear it too and be like, I know this, I know this, <laughs> right? And then when we get started like, oh, that's so yes. awesome. And so. So we have Joni Mitchell tunes, like I said, Sade, Tracy Chapman, Kate Bush. I don't do the Kate Bush one live because it's an acapella arrangement that I really wanted to do. And so that's like a little special treat just for the album. And um, and I actually did that arrangement like solely in my head. Like I didn't have a piano to plunk it out. I just had all the ideas in my head and I was in another country and I didn't have access to anything. And wow. when I came back into the States, I booked a, a session in the studio and just laid down all the parts that were happening in my mind. And it, so I was really surprised how it turned out too, because I had never really heard it. Yeah. Um, so that's something really special. Um, but for the live performance, we'll be doing songs um, from those particular artists that we reimagined on intuition, songs from the minds of women, and introducing people to artists that maybe they don't even know of. So one of them is my voice student. Her name is Molly Pease. And she was auditioning for Cal Arts, and you know I was getting her ready. And she brought in this incredible composition called Transform, and I was trying to play the piano and like teach her, and I was like, <laughs> like trying not to cry, and it because it hits so hard in the heart in such a beautiful way. And so that's one of the tunes that mm -hmm. I perform as well. And I worked with Christian Sands, and we you know did a, a little nice little spin on it as well. 
and um, and also music by Angela Bolfield. So the tune that you love is Angela Bolfield. And a lot of people, uh, sometimes they don't really know uh, who she is. And so it's really great to get a chance to introduce some of these incredible female yeah. composers and pique that interest, pique that curiosity as well as, and I have my own originals that I do as well. So it's been a real gift to watch how these audiences are, are reconnecting to these tunes, some that they know of, some that they don't, but it just is a testament to the power and timelessness. Mm -hmm. of and it's just incredible. So I'm so excited to, to yeah. continue that tour because it was, it was definitely put on pause. Uh, yeah. And once, sure. once the pandemic hit, it just wiped out like the rest of the tour for 2020. And so I'm for like, sure. like, I'm, like, I'm so excited. Just get it out. Yeah. This mm -hmm. album produced by Ulysses Owens Jr., by the way, who's been doing, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. his thing. Mm -hmm. So it's produced by, by him, by Kamal Kenyatta and myself. So it was like this beautiful triumvirate of us, you know, coming yes. together and just really figuring out what parts we really felt our production skills would amplify. Huh. And so, and I love collaborations like that because I'm all about the vocals. I'm all about what's happening in vocals. What, you know, let's get this down, let's produce, let's get these arrangements together, let's do you know, things like that. And Ulysses really stepped in and made sure that the, the, the musicians were the ones that that really could bring their signature sound in a way that would exalt the goal, what we're doing to the highest level. There's so mm -hmm. many amazing musicians. How do you know which ones are going to sync up with the musical vision that you have? That's a very different question. And he has such an incredible ability of knowing that mm -hmm. and being able to say, you know who'd be great for this? This person. And it works just like that every single time. And mm -hmm. Kamau is like this big visionary. Like he will just show up and have a very clear vision of the whole thing. And that's so powerful because sometimes, you know, those of you who've done projects, you know how you can get, you start looking at the minutiae of everything. You're like, oh, this, blah, blah, blah. he's like, hey, here's the big picture. Let's get this grand vision into perspective. He has an incredible way of doing that as he produces for um, Gregory Porter as well. That's how we actually nice. get and connected. So, it, and it makes such a powerhouse team the three of us producing this this album and you hear it you hear it in the music beautiful well what's next for you what do you have coming up that you can kind of give us a well into, if you if you want you know, yes you oh no i'm gonna give it to you straight <laughs> <laughs> well last year i recorded an album um a duet album actually with theo blackman and he's such this this brilliant. Mm -hmm. I always think of him like a madman with music. Like he's just the 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 genius behind what he creates is just so beautiful and fun, you know. And so we actually did a collaborative project called the Parsonage, and it's actually telling the stories of um, a a historic building here in New York City. And it's almost like if these walls could talk. So you get a chance to have songs from each generation, from the sixties, seventies, the eighties, the nineties, all the way up till now. And each song was um, written by a different composer. And the, the lyrics and the vision of this was by um, an incredible mind. His name is David Hachu. And so we came together and did this crazy project. I'm telling you, you hear it, it's like, it, it's, good. It's, it's pulling in all the different sounds. It's, it's incredible. So that'll be coming out. And I don't know the exact date of that, but that's definitely in the pipeline. We've already finished okay. it. It was incredible. And then the exciting thing I'm going to be doing actually is I'm going to be reconnecting with my old collaborative partner and ex-husband, Michael Olatuja. And we're wow. going to be re bringing back Olatuja Project. It would just be called Olatuja this time. And, you know, we just we decided we're going to fall in line with, you know, Ella, Ron, you know, a lot of the collaborative, you know, partners have found a way to repurpose their love in a way that continuously brings forth that music, even if the relationship isn't popping, even if it's not the same as it was, they're able to say, okay, that, 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 we, we're not going to do that. Let's, but yeah. look years and let's not let go of our first love. Which wow. Is and so we've already met and we've really good friends. We've been friends now, you know, we, we parted ways as a couple years ago, but we remained really, really good friends. And so we are so excited to do this work together because we've grown so much since 
way back when, when we first did, did the Old Teacher Project. The Old Teacher Project. Growth. <laughs> what was it? Growth. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag that. I um, love it. Yeah. So oh, well, really I can't exciting. wait to hear more about that. And we will yeah. talk more about that. Yeah. So I yeah. thank you so much, man. I, I can't wait to see what you have going on next. And Flushing Town Hall on the 19th, of course, whoop, whoop. is happening with you and your band. Tell me about your band, who you'll have with you that night. So Flushing Town Hall, I believe we will have um, Toru Dodo on keys. And he has such a romantic touch on the keys. I just love how he just expresses himself. He's like singing through it. It's beautiful. And we'll have TJ Reddick on drums. Nice. I believe we'll have David Rosenthal on guitar. He's my right hand man. He's like, never leave home without him. He's like that credit card. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, he's been with me since school times. And um, and then for bass, I can't remember who we have on bass. Daniel. Winchell. Oh, oh, I'm, yay! Yes. Daniel. Okay. <laughs> so Daniel is a new uh, addition to um, the band. Uh, we have many people that we play with, but I he stepped in at the last minute and saved the day. And when people step in at the last minute and save the day, I just feel like I'm going to keep an eye on them. And the first time I played with him was at the show you came to in Montclair. I never oh, rehearsed wow. with him, never met him. He stood on that stage and he brought all that soul and had never even practiced with us. Oh never my goodness. With us. And I was like, oh my goodness. I'm going to hold on to this one. So he's going to be with us. And did I forget Easy. anything? Key. That's all I have here. Okay. <laughs> okay. <That's all. laughs> well, I don't know who else is showing up. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be magic. Oh, my goodness. We have a couple comments here. And guys, of course, if you have any questions yes. or anything, please mm -hmm. definitely ask Miss Olutuja right now. Um, oh, you got some people checking in from St. Louis. Hey, um, yes, Melinda Wallace. Hey. I see you here. Uh, George Page, thank you. He's checking in. Oh, my co my colleagues, Alex, Arif, and Jamara. Uh, she said, he says, Alicia is bad. <laughs> Jamara says, loving this Thank energy. You. And Alex also says, you're greater why. He digs that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cedric says, hey, greetings, queens. Uh -huh. <laughs> Y'all living great vibes as always. Love, enjoy, peace. And also Valencia says, bravo and uplifting women composers on Yay. the CD, awesome. Intuition, Songs from the Minds of Women, and in doing your own background vocals on so many of the songs. Yeah. I did. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing background vocal arrangements actually longer than I've been singing as a soloist. I started doing arranging vocals when I was in junior high. <laughs> like really that, wow. yeah yeah i grew up listening to take six and oh yes limited and acapella so i've always been fascinated with how the voice can just really become so many different types of instrumental experiences you know you get that sound like strings and then you have other lines and percussiveness so i've actually been doing uh background vocal arranging for even myself but even other artists for years years and years so it's wow like, really like that's something that really gets me going. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Well, thank you so much. And also Mark, I don't want to forget Mark Lemieux, Le, Lemieux is, is it? I believe Lemieux, <laughs> from Toronto. He says Toronto's in the house. Hey! Toronto. Viola from New York. Awesome. Thank you guys for checking in. And thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you for having me on. This is fun. I really enjoy it. <laughs> Indeed. Tell us again where we can find out more about your Vocal Breakthrough Academy, the website, and just follow you and keep track of where you are because you're everywhere, it seems. Well, you know, it just happens like the, the doors have opened. I'm just like, <laughs> but yes, so you can always find me on my website, which is aliciolatuja.com. If you want to know more about the Academy, you can go to vocalbreakthroughacademy.com. And if you want to just stay connected to me in all ways, you can always find me on social media, my Instagram, which is just Alicia Olatuja. I'm the only Alicia Olatuja in the world. So if you That's just Google that name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, good to keep the last name sometimes, you know? Yes. <laughs> like Tina Turner, right? So, yes. Exactly. <laughs> so you can find me on there. And like I said, you can always tune into um, my IG lives that I do every Monday, 12 p.m. And I just try to drop gems to get people to be able to use singing as that tool for personal development, but just showing different ways. And I, I, 
discover many things throughout currently that I bring into those lives, those IG lives. And so they are pop. Ben, and that's where I'll keep you up to date with whatever's going on as well, straight from my mouth to your ears. So if you want to find me there, that's also a, one of the best ways, because I'm always making sure I'm keeping that community up to date personally versus just something that you see written up. But yeah, all that's available. We love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I can't wait to talk again soon. Yes, we're going to stay on the line after we cut this up. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you so much. No problem. It's wonderful. Thank you all for tuning in. Yes. And we'll see you again very soon. Yes. I know. I feel it in my spirit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care. All righty. Bye. Bye. And thank you all so much, of course, as always, for joining me here on The Pulse. You can keep up with all things Pulse related by going online to the WBGO website at wbgo.org slash The Pulse. And stay tuned because I have a couple of interviews coming up in honor of Women's History Month uh, that you're going to want to stay tuned and find out all about. So in the meantime, I'll see you on the radio. I'm Kiana Faircloth. And this has been The Pulse. Have a great night. And thank you all for your questions, of course. As always, love to see it. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.